Now, I don't know who asked for this game to exist, but I'm very mildly glad that they did. Rage 2 is a good, but not great game. It's something that you pick up and play every now and again. You don't think too much about about it or invest too much of your time heavily into it. It's, it's fun. It's kind of like Saints Row meets uh, Mad Max with a with FPS instead of third person action. It's it's good. It's good, but it's got a lot of problems with it. And that's I think a lot of that is down to how it's split between two different teams. I think with the gameplay itself, the main meat of the gameplay when you are shooting and punching and blowing stuff up basically, that's the work of id and I think that's where Rage 2 is at its best. But when it comes to what I, th I think Avalanche might have been doing here, uh, it falls down a little bit. For the 15 of you in the world who can remember the plot to the original Rage, you can stop listening now and fast forward, uh, but for everyone else it was basically a continuation of the end of that. Uh, the authority is back in Rage 2 and you are the last surviving ranger of a refuge called Vineland and Basically, it's just a, a retread of the first game. It's it's not very good. It's not very good. It's, I don't think it's anyone looking at Rage 2 getting uh, released is going to think, wow, that's going to win a BAFTA. It's It exists as well, so the story, it's it's functional. It's functional to about the, the degree that a book cover is. It's about as deep as that as well. Uh, there are characters, but you don't really seem in, you don't really have any reason to get invested in them. Uh, it's more of a lightweight, silly game to play. It kind of reminds me in the same way, like I've said already, of Saints Row. In that game, you really didn't have any sort of connection. To the story, the story wasn't the main thing to do. The story wasn't the main reason to care. It was the stupidity and the fun you could get up to, and that's kind of what will anchor most of your time with Rage 2. Uh, I've played about 20 hours, and I honestly, right, honestly, I couldn't tell you a thing about the story. <laughs> Not a goddamn thing. <laughs> no, it's the gameplay you're here for, and the gameplay, as I've said before, with the combat and the on-foot stuff, that's brilliant. That is, you can clearly t tell that is the work of id here, because they, they know how to make an FPS feel great, even on a controller. I played this on a PS4 Pro with a review code supplied by Bethesda, and I've got to say that it feels brilliant hit. It feels so smooth and buttery. It's one of those games where you feel more powerful the more you progress. You can like visibly and physically feel yourself uh, getting much better and more powerful as it goes on. Uh, early on you don't have much in the way of abilities. You can go to these different arcs and find different things to find different weapons. Uh, you start off the most basic one which is a little shift. So you basically just uh, zip to the side and front and back, so, but you can change that up by doing it in the air as well, so you can jump up and then scoot to your side or your left and then you get out of the way of rockets and stuff. Very straightforward. There's nothing much there, but once you can combine that by jumping out of an aeroplane, uh, then doing a ground pound, then jumping into someone's face and basically pushing their soul out of their body and then throwing a, like, a black hole to oblivion at their friend, that's when it really gets really fun. Uh, the, the the feel is wonderful of the action here, it's so good. Um, most of the action is fairly repetitive, but it's in how you approach it, the way you'll get the most fun in Rage 2. There's also a decent selection of weaponry to mess around with, but I did honestly find myself leaning back on the assault rifle and the shotgun. Uh, Rage 2 is pretty unique in how its ADS determines the fire, the fire mode of your weapons, for example. So with a shotgun, uh, if you just go hip fire, it'll just be a standard shotgun. But with the ADS, it'll turn it into a concussive shot, which is more, pow more powerful to a concentrated degree, but it will not just um, cause as much damage. So it'll f fly people back but it will not uh, blow their heads off as easily, for example. It's all pretty interesting in how it accomplishes that. Honestly, if you've played Rage 1, then you know quite a lot of what to expect in Rage 2. Uh, for better or worse, it doesn't diverge too much 
too far away from that formula. You have wing sticks, you can be a bit stealthier, or you can go more aggressively. It's really kind of up to you what you do and how you play. It really is just a big, sparse playground to mess around in. And like I said, there's, if you want something serious and something that you really have to dig your teeth into, you're looking in the wrong place, really. Most of your time will be spent venturing around, exploring the massive open world in a post-apocalyptic setting, uh, basically taking on bandits and the authority and mutants and all that good stuff. There's nothing too much in terms of variety or a colour palette. There's It's basically brown with sprinkles of post-apocalyptic pink, as it's now called, I think. Uh, it's, not, it's, it's very sparse. It's a fairly gigantic map. But the way it's laid out is there's not actually much to do in it apart from shoot the things and make them dead. Uh, beyond that, you're best looking somewhere else for the variety. I think Avalanche must have been behind the open world because they are known for doing these very sparse, very empty, but very, very big worlds. As well as having vehicles and uh, traversal like that, which it don't really do or have really excelled with before in the past if I can remember correctly uh, but the, the vehicular stuff here when you have to get in behind the wheel of a car oh it's not fun I, I couldn't find much fun in it it's it feels odd I don't know how to explain it. it feels odd the camera never seems to want to play nice it always be like underneath your exhaust or something crazy like that and there's not there's not a great feel to it like turning corners always feels like unresponsive like yeah no matter what vehicle you're driving. There's a nice selection of vehicles here, but it all feels the same. It all feels like very much like you're driving a fridge around. Um, and that's kind of like the split personality of Rage 2 again, because while the gameplay and the action and the shooting is great, all the stuff that you think Id would have controlled and overseen, all of that is fantastic. But the rest of it, with, with Avalanche, you are on a really rocky run of it lately with Generation Zero and Just Cause 4 that stuff isn't too hot, it's fairly bland and boring and not that inviting. And oh, the bugs. I, I seem to be cursed with bad luck with bugs lately, because I was just playing Days Gone and I was the only person in the universe that struggled there too. But here, I've just ran into bug after bug after bug. At the start, they weren't too bad. It was just small things like duplicated characters when you're trying to talk to them, silly things like people getting stuck in the door, but that later on there was a much worse bug where I I didn't go through the exact door the game wanted me to for a mission, so it didn't trigger a series of events to allow the rest of the mission to open up and for it to checkpoint itself properly. So I ended up having to try and redo the mission after having already unofficially completed it, but without it considering it completed. So I had to go right down to the bottom of this level again and ended up getting stuck there and I couldn't auto save to go back beyond this point because every auto save I had was basically a uh, brick wall had been brick walled off for me to go back and try it again so I, I was very lucky that I was able to use a manual save I go I lost about an hour in total which was a bit of a bummer but it could have been a lot worse I just randomly saved and that kind of saved my ass there so should you play rage 2 or not I will give it a conservative yes but if you've got a lot else to play at the minute, or if you're not exactly immediately compelled to go and buy it, I can, I'd can i say you can still continue waiting, really. There's nothing here that you won't miss in a couple of months' time when it's a bit cheaper, and when a, lot, a few of its issues have been patched and maybe they've added some more content. Maybe, I'm not too sure. Uh, the gameplay is great, like I said. The action and the shooting and the rampaging is brilliant, but it's a 50-50 story. Everything it does is great. Everything Avalanche Studio, I think, do isn't so hot. But I've, I've, for sure, for sure, I have had more fun with it than Rage 1. So take that as you will. Anyway, have you played Rage 2? Let me know what you think down below. Thanks.